Yo, what is up guys? This is me from a Nugget video on DNS. Before I talk about the DNS, let me tell you about the problem it solves. If I ask you right now to tell me the phone number of the last person that made it into your contact list, there is a good chance you'll have to reach out to your phone and search the name of that person and then tell me the number associated with it. Because of course, let's face it, you suck at remembering numbers. <laughs> Sorry, we suck as human beings at remembering numbers. And we also suck at remembering addresses like this, right? Why do you think we have website names like this or this or this? All right, I admit it, sometimes we suck at coming up with good names too. Anyway, the internet is a big complicated network of everything. We have websites served by web servers, we have clients requesting those servers, we have emails, we have plugged devices, etc. And the only way to access and communicate with those elements of the internet is through their numbers, <laughs> sorry, their addresses that look like this or this. And it sounds like this is not something humans will be able to remember as well. And to be able to navigate through the internet and the web in a friendly and painless manner, we have to come up with a system like the contact list on our phones. Fortunately, that system already exists. It's called DNS, the domain name system. All right, what is this DNS? So the domain name system is the phone book of the internet. It is a simple or a rather simple way to map internet domains or that is to say IP addresses to domain names. And keep in mind that even though users and developers do not need or do not have to know anything specific about this system, that is to say the DNS, understanding what it is and how it works is important, especially if you are a web developer and security is one of your big concerns. Now let's zoom in a little bit and talk about more details and how it works. Sweet. So the process of converting URLs into IP addresses is not a simple one-step process. Of course, when you want to visit the Amazon website, for example, you type amazon.com and boom, you are there in few milliseconds. However, what happened behind the scenes in those few milliseconds looks like a two hours errand. First of all, the process of converting what we type in the URL bar or the buttons we click on web pages that take us to other websites is called DNS resolution. So as soon as we click or hit enter, the DNS resolution begins. At this moment, the browser or the web client in general sends a DNS query to a DNS resolver and wait, 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 dude, tell me first what is a DNS query and what the heck is a DNS resolver? All right, first a DNS DNS query is a request for information related to a domain name, which typically is answered by an IP address. And a DNS resolver is a server that is supposed to track down and fetch the right IP address for the host name you type it as fast as possible. A DNS resolver sends and receives queries to and from a DNS server on your behalf. And this DNS server is actually the guy who has the contact list of the internet. Okay, DNS resolvers, also called recursive resolvers, are servers servers in the local network that are operated by your internet service provider, for example, or a third party and it acts as an intermediary between clients and DNS servers. So DNS resolvers are the first step in the process of converting a web link into an IP address. Great, now let's continue our story. We said that after you type in a website name or click a link, your browser needs to know the IP address related to that link before it can actually send the real query to the server and bring back the resource you're looking for. All right, the first step to get the address is to hand the query to a DNS resolver that will in turn query a DNS server and ask for the IP address. Now. You might be asking, why do we need an intermediary? Why do we need a DNS resolver? Couldn't we just ask the DNS server directly, like send a query directly to the DNS server? You see, a resolver actually increases the efficiency of the whole DNS resolution. Without DNS resolvers, clients will have to keep track of the different DNS servers, their addresses, and whether they are still operating or not, and they will have to check for updates regularly, and most importantly, they need to have security measures in place to protect against DNS attacks, and also, all right, all right, I think that's enough to tell you that we really need someone else to handle these aspects for us, right? So stop complaining and be grateful for DNS resolvers. Let's move on. Next, I wanna tell you about the whole process of DNS resolution. 
But let me tell you first about the different DNS servers. Sweet. So I mentioned that a DNS resolver is different than a DNS server in that DNS resolvers only handle requests or queries and responses for the browser's requests. DNS resolvers are responsible for finding the IP address of the requested website as soon as possible. So here, before the resolver contacts any DNS server, it will look for the IP address in its local cache. If the record we're looking for doesn't exist in the cache, then we will have to contact the next element of the equation, the DNS root server. Now, root servers are a network of hundreds of servers around the world. They are called root servers because they exist at the root of the DNS hierarchy. Root servers are used to find top level domains or TLE servers. That is to say, for instance, .com servers, .net servers, etc. And keep in mind that it's a good practice when we want to search for something to try to narrow the scope or range as much as possible. For this reason, TLE servers direct us towards the right server to get the appropriate IP address based on the top level domain, which could be .com, .edu, or country related TLE, etc. Okay, great. So when the query hits the root server, it will send a request to the right TLD server based on the query, of course. And then the latter provides the IP address of the appropriate authoritative name server, which is the last step in finding out the right address for the client. Eventually, the right IP address is returned to the resolver and the client receives the address so it can actually make the request. And these are the different types of DNS servers in a nutshell. Now let's recap and see how the whole process of DNS resolution takes place. So here I am trying to make a request. I type the URL and I hit enter. The web browser might look in the computer's cache for the address. If it doesn't find it there, it moves to the next step. What is the next step? Yep, that is correct. The next step is to query the DNS resolver. So knowing the IP address of the closest DNS resolver, the browser sends a query and waits for the IP address of the website I typed. Now the resolver is gonna take care of everything. First, it tries to find the address in the local cache. That would be better, right? But what do you know, the resolver's cache is of no use at all. So the DNS resolver queries a DNS root server. The root server responds with the address of the top level domain server based on the TLE of the URL given. That is sweet. What's next? Then the resolver receives the address of the right top level domain address and sends a request asking it for the appropriate address of the authoritative server. After it gets it, the TLD server responds with the address of the authoritative server. And finally, the DNS resolver sends a query to the authoritative name server to get the IP address of the final destination. As soon as the resolver receives the IP address, it sends it to the browser. And at this stage, the browser is able to make an HTTP request to the IP address I typed and show me the website I've been waiting for. Oh my god. I think these events could make a great novel with a terrific but slightly boring story. And by the way, uh, there is a sequel to this story. And you can find more about it under the title of the HTTP and the web in my channel. All right. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. The story of DNS is boring but important nevertheless. I invite you to support me by subscribing, hitting the like button and leaving me a comment. I would really appreciate it. Until the next video, stay fine and stay tuned.